One that we work with the most is a parallel circuit. Right here is, is a parallel circuit. The difference between a series circuit and a parallel circuit is because if this is your hot lead, you are always powering up one of your resistors. And if this is neutral, it's always going to be landed there. If we have one of these burn out and go open, the other two are going to remain powered or remain lit, right? If these are three light bulbs and this one goes out, these two are going to remain lit. Does everybody understand that? Parallel circuits, and that's what we deal with the most in, in the heating and air world. Anybody have any questions about it before we go to the next one? No? Okay. Let's do the math on this, on this particular circuit. We don't know what the amperage is. We know what the voltage is. The vo voltage supply is 120 volts. We know what the resistance is. We have a 20 ohm resistor, a 300 ohm resistor, and an 80 ohm resistor. Can everybody see that easily? Okay. If we know what the voltage is and what the resistance is of this one, let's, do, let's just go ahead and do this. We have 120. And if we divide it by 20, we're going to have 6 amps. So on this, we're going to have 6 amps. If we have 300 ohm resistor in parallel, we divide 120 by 300. And if anybody wants to do this on their, on their uh, calculator, keep me, pardon me? And that's going to be 0.4 amps, right. So here's 0.4. And if we have an 80 ohm resistor, 120 divided by 80 is 1.5. 0.5. Amps, okay? So this is our amperage. That was easy. Now, in a parallel circuit, we don't just add all the resistors together and do the math like, in, like we showed in Ohm's Law. We need to do it completely independently, and that's what I like about this chart. This chart just makes it really simple. We've got R1, R2, and R3 resistors. And in the R1, get rid of this. In the R1, we've got, point, or we've got 6 amps, okay? And so if we do the math on that, we put it over in this column, uh, R2 is 0.4 and R3 is 1.5. If we added all those loads up, we have 7.9 amps total. Okay, so now we know that we've got 120 volts up here. And in the end, we are pulling 7.9 amps. Okay, so our total amperage is 7.9. Now we know what the voltage in the amperage is. But if we want to figure out the ohms, now that we, that we have figured out all the, the, uh, the individual amps and totaled them up, now we can use Ohm's law. And so let's do that. We've got voltage divided by amperage, because now we know what the total voltage is and the total amperage. So that's 120 volts divided by 7.9. Somebody do that for me. One twenty divided by seven point nine is going to be a total of fifteen ohms of resistance. Okay? Everybody see that? All right, now when we actually work on the equipment, very seldom will we ever have to do this kind of math, but it's really important to, uh, for you to understand. <clears throat> we need to know how much, how much total amperage is if we know what the resistance and the, and the voltage is. And if you don't have an amp probe like this to, to test for amps, or if it doesn't work one of these days, you will have to do the math on that just to make sure when you're putting new equipment in that you're not gonna overload a circuit. All right, any questions on that? None whatsoever? Is everybody getting this? Good, okay, cool. All right, 
So now you know why I use the ohm symbol for resistance because that's on your meter. Now you know why I use V instead of E because that is on your meter. And now you know why I use A instead of I for current because that's what we use on our meter all the time. We check amps, we, we check volts, and we check ohms. All right. So now let's go ahead and move on to the next slide if everybody's comfortable with that.